Hey there. Happy New Year. Happy New Bye. Year. Got Harvey here as well. Hey. <laughs> you should have brought the platypus down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not for this meeting. Okay. API is going to be. Build update. Do you have anything else you want to stick on here? Uh, these are the two. Oh, you already put them on. Okay. Yeah, the two ones that I Yeah. <sighs> Do I have anything else to stick on here? Nope. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. there's a merge conflict. I can't see something up here. Yeah. I want to, yes, I'm going to work on that. Twitch. Works for me. Since we're starting with V3A API update, okay. I think that's up to you. Uh, okay, so uh, V3 Alpha, many of the major PRs were merged last week. Uh, so anyone who's working with the APIs internally, if there's a V3 Alpha alternative, you should be using that. Most of Envoy internally is updated. Now, in theory, this should make absolutely zero difference to um, configurations between JS, like Bootstrap, or things which come from the wire. Um, if you notice issues, please speak up and say something because we are planning on freezing V3 after V3 in the coming days and also uh, cutting the 1.13 release, uh, ideally before end of week. So a lot of this uh, relies on us getting a sort of useful signal from folks who are actually, you know, working on master at head and who might uh, notice things, uh, issues that arise as, uh, you know, they, they actually do rollouts and they they start, they, uh, they bump to past where we've cut um, V3. Um, we've noticed in like the recent, a uh, couple of recent PRs, there has been some memory increase in like per endpoint and per cluster overhead. The per cluster one's not significant. Per endpoint one, I'm actually about to merge one, uh, which will increase the minimal endpoint overhead by about 20%, which is something to do with V3. It has to do with switching away from host to cluster load assignments. I don't know why exactly, but you may notice that. You may also notice some additional CPU usage fleet-wide if you do a lot of uh, configuration processing, like for example, um, you know, ingesting large configurations. Um, some of this is to be expected. We, don't, we haven't quite quantified what that is. Uh, we expect it not to be like, you know, a factor of two blowout, but it could be a single digit or low double digit uh, overhead. So we would like to learn more um, uh, as, as we progress, but uh, I don't think any of these things are going to uh, be uh, showstoppers for the uh, um, 1.13 release. 
So on to the 1.13 release. Um, it's as you know, it's time for our quarterly release. Um, I'm not sure the, there's been a lot of stuff which has happened in the, in the last quarter. One of the major things will be the V3 APIs, but there's lots of other things which are going to make their way in there. Um, I'll be looking at cutting that release later this week if we don't hear any, uh, you know, that, that there are any fires burning. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what else there is really to say there. Uh, okay. I, th I think that's a good summary. Um, are we, so are we, shooting for the end of this week or do we think that that's not not realistic still i th i don't know how, how, how are you going with deprecations yeah i mean i think i think deprecation is probably the long pole that's my guess well, so i i have everything set up it'll take me like an hour per pr once you land yours assuming you hey, did i also land last night oh geez i missed yeah. that okay i'll do that Sorry. i'll do that today um did you do the the changes to the runtime thing or did you not set those in how we put the right time yeah, we'll, we'll sync. Uh, I should be able to get uh, one of mine, if not both of them, in today and the other one in tomorrow. They're like, again, 98% of the work is done. It's like merging Harveys and doing a tiny bit of cleanup that's big tactic, like spelling of config strings and tests. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, yeah I, I think that on those runtime keys, I my personal opinion is that we can play it a little fast and loose just yep. in the sense that I think people generally are not setting them. And if yep. they were setting them, they should have told us. So I, th I think it's okay to just like change the keys and just yeah, send yeah, yeah. I just wanted to make yeah. sure we changed it. We changed it to something that made sense. That's yep. mm -hmm. V2 alpha deprecated yep. it or something or other. Yep. <laughs> yep. So. Yes, yes, that, that should be <laughs> right. now. Um, awesome. Right. Um, so yeah, so I think optimistically end of week, um, if there could be potential slippage into, into next week, but definitely no later because we have bunch of other reasons um, uh, that, that I can't slip further. And particularly, like right now, we would like folks to refrain from merging any high risk PRs. So obviously, uh, you kind of remain in that state indefinitely. Yep. And you should take that on maintainers because not everyone's here. Uh, I, I did on the channel. Oh, God, I'm so behind all things. Okay. Yeah. Moving on to that then. Okay. Um, I just wanted to briefly mention, um, th this has come up before, but, and it came up again recently with the increasing number of extensions that people are trying to merge into the main repo. Um, I, I, I think we are going to have to start thinking about either, um, initially doing multiple Docker images. So you could think of like, a you know, like a core Envoy version with like only security vetted things or something like that. And then there's a, yeah, per that, per that tweet, there's the Envoy ultimate edition, which has <laughs> all of the, all of the extensions. But I, I, I think the next logical step here, which is something that the community is really going to have to talk about is whether longer term, <clears throat> we keep every extension in the main repo or we end up having a, you know, something like Envoy filter example that ends up being a little more official, um, just in this, so that, like all of the overflow extensions would go into that repo and the bar of merging those extensions would be less. Um, and then if they want to get them back in the main repo for inclusion in like the core images or something like that, you know, we would require fuzzing or like various other security type things and, and documentation and stuff like that. So <clears throat> there's no real policy here. Um, I think I'm going to put something together for, for community discussion in the next couple of weeks. But if, you know, if, if folks have thoughts here, um, you know, I, I think that would be useful, you know, or if anyone has any thoughts on the call right now. Yeah, I think the thing to notice is that submit to onboard proper their extensions for a variety of reasons. Now, one of these is because, hey, it's part of the official Envoy distribution. It's gonna mean everybody's Envoy binary. It's gonna, uh, uh, um, and so on. The other is um, to get CI coverage. Probably another is like, so that it's, you know, like uh, probably, I don't know, that it's considered to be one of the high quality Envoy first class extensions. I figure we can at least provide the CI coverage one by this external repo, and that's essentially what we'll be shooting for, right? Another thing, if you want them, you're going to have to work for them at a probably a higher bar, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if you're 
if you're interested in this topic and if you're if you're a vendor you probably are um you know i would say definitely reach out i, I think it would be an interesting conversation to have uh does um, this oh quick question matt uh does this then broach the question uh, uh bring us back to the question of uh loadable modules at some point yeah i mean you know it does. And there's the open issue there, which again, I don't really think it's that hard. Like I think someone could implement it. Um, I don't know that that solves the question. I don't know that that solves the problem though, because even with loadable modules, you're still probably going to expect, you know, some type of bundling and especially with C++, you know, they all have to be compiled at the same time, yada, yada, yada. So, I, I, I agree that loadable modules potentially makes it better. I, I don't know that it really fixes the underlying problem in the sense that people are still like many vendors today, from what I've seen in the Envoy ecosystem, is they're expecting like people to bring their own Envoy and have it just work. And that means that all of the extensions are already bundled in. Um, so I think just from a community perspective, you know, there's been some ongoing work and like having config dump say what extensions are compiled in and it's just like this is a very complicated topic where we have a tension between people that want to have a very limited trusting trusted computing base and vendors that want like the, the, the kitchen sink so that they don't need to worry about deployment issues it's it's quite complicated yeah then the, i think if we want to go to, to loadable modules um simply so based on the web assembly null vm even if it's their C++ modules would be the only thing that really makes sense to avoid having significant breakages, yeah. uh, basically on an ongoing basis because we have no internal ABI stability. Yeah. Anyway, um, if you're, if you're interested, please reach out to me on, on, on Slack. Um, I'll type something up and we can, we can hash it out in a doc. Um, the only other thing that I wanted to mention about the stable release policy is that this has also been kicking around for a long time. Um, I think post 113, we're probably going to start a policy where we start maintaining uh, multiple stable branches. So that will include probably backporting security fixes to at least the last two releases to give people at least a three month window um, to upgrade. And it will probably also mean in conjunction, at least with the Istio team of backporting bug fixes also. However, this will require community stable maintainers. So we've talked you know, to various people who might be interested, but um, I, I would expect to see another policy update here probably in the next couple of weeks, um, but, we, but we will need community help. So if you're, if you're interested, uh, please also reach out. I thought Istio wanted at least a year worth of releases. <coughs> I think it, right. So I think if they, I think if people want more than X, they're, they're going to have to pony up the resources, but that's something that we will have to hash out here. Like, I don't, I don't think it's reasonable to ask, you know, the primary Envoy security team, the upstream maintainers to say backport security fixes to four for releases. It's just too time consuming. So I, I think that, but these are the kinds of things that we will have to hash out for sure. Okay. I mean, technically they already have resources because they're already doing. No, no, right, right, right. Yeah. So like this, this, I mean, the, the, the quote get resources may just mean that the Istio people agree to do it. And if they don't do it, it just doesn't get done basically. But again, you know, there are other people who may want it in the standard build. So anyone who's right. interested in longer things can contribute people right. have their own rotation and get it done. I, I think what's more, I think what's more important is having a discussion about what the upstream maintainers will and won't do versus what the community will and won't do. So for example, it's great if the community does X, but I think it's more important to say that the upstream maintainers will not do X, meaning like the upstream maintainers will only backport security fixes to the last two releases or something like that. But again, we'll help with the scaffolding to, yep. you know, allow people with early access to do the work to do yeah. more. Right. If there's value. Yep. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. Okay. I'm done. I'm pointing us at Jan. 
for anyone who yeah. hasn't met Jan. Right. <laughs> Welcoming uh, Jan. <laughs> so, so welcome, uh, Jan is, uh, is uh, officially now an Envoy maintainer. We'll be sending out the PR later today, so it's very exciting. Um, uh, he's done a lot of like awesome work in the areas of um, like um, security fixes for Netflix, uh, C, uh, the HTTP2 issues, so like around you know our codex, around um, Bootstrap, uh, sorry, like, like, sorry, the node enhancements for uh, uh, exactly this kind of thing that Matt was talking about for extension discovery, and um, uh, also in the space of like the APIs and so on, they made a bunch of contributions towards the V3 uh, APIs. So yeah, that's all been super awesome, and I think. Uh, uh, I don't know, Jan. Do you want to say anything about the way you think we should focus going forward? Or? Uh, well, I, I I think the plan right now is to focus on some of the data plane work and uh, make sure we get some um, some sanity there. Maybe do, doing some refactoring uh, and in general helping with reviews and and other stuff. Great. And then Pivotal had wanted to talk about file system normalization. Yeah, just to, to uh, one thing that we, uh, most of this discussion happened on the OSX dev channel. Uh, it just turns out that uh, C++17 standard uh, file system uh, just still remains completely unusable or unpredictable uh, between POSIX and Mac and Windows and so forth. Uh, so it looked, uh, we finally realized it's easier to just deal with all of this in terms of POSIX or in terms of, well, POSIX or Windows specifics. Uh, so we're basically looking, uh, we've almost got a patch together that gets rid of uh, standard file system altogether from the working tree. Uh, and I'm also looking at the fact that uh, there's a tremendous amount of overlap in the API between uh, the way we're doing IO handle uh, for sockets and the way that we're doing um, uh, the file system. API. Uh, it looks to it looks like there's got to be a, a super class of that, or a, uh, you know, we should be able to abstract this enough that all these things look similar and are usable by everybody uh, without a great deal of hassle. So that's our that's our current project and why we've kind of got gone off the rails again in terms of the getting the core master compiling on Windows because this problem was to be dealt with. Yeah, on the on the standard file system side, I, I think that makes sense to me just because I think that will likely allow us to upgrade to C17 since we already know that on Envoy Mobile, like standard file system is not going to work for the foreseeable future. So uh, my advice is we already have the file system abstraction. I think as long as we just plumb that through everywhere, and then even if it's not implemented yet on Envoy Mobile or in Windows or whatever, we can we can we can get that done. Um, and then on the on the IO handle stuff, there's more work that needs to be done there. So if you could float any proposal by myself and Dan, who's working on Quick, she and I can take a look. Happy to do that. Oh, uh, actually, um, I realize now what you're pointing this at me because the next agenda item is mine. I just wanted to put in a plug before I release it. Uh, uh, we've been iterating a little bit on a proposal to experiment with with uh, improving header map performance in the worst case, and. Uh, um, uh, it's almost ready to uh, be distributed, and I just wanted to see if, uh, say, if you are interested in reviewing it, ping me on Slack. I'll, of course, put a link on the, the channel as well. Could you get, I mean, could you give some, like, type of quick summary of what, what it is? Uh, sure. So there's <clears throat> some order n squared, uh, well, there's some order n operations around headers, which uh, the system doesn't know about yet and there's also a little bit of a, a conflation of being fast versus uh, coalescing behavior which yep. I think would be better to clean up a little bit and uh, actually it doesn't the the doc does not specify what to do it just gives a bunch of options and uh, pastes some 
um, performance graphs from what I had experimented with like a month ago, just to kind of get that out. And I wanted to kind of get somebody full time to work on this. Yeah. There's, there's, yep. there's also like an, like a, another issue, and that is like every time we show this code to security auditors, like, okay, then we tell we put them at Envoy. I, I know Matt's uh, go, is, is looking away because he, he, he has solutions here, but um, you know, historically, every time we've had a security audit, folks zoom in on this code, and it's not that the code is incorrect. It's that it's, it burns time of the auditors because they're looking at very low level um, mem copy, malloc, you know, buffer resizing kind of stuff, which we definitely, and, and, and I realize with Absal, there's like, you know, replacements for that. But whatever we do should hopefully simplify things and make it so that this is not the focus of auditors' time. Yep. Auditors can focus on like the, the, the interesting stuff. The only thing that I would say is I, I, I think there's there's two separate things here. And what I would suggest is that the proposal that I put out to replace all of the low level stuff with Absiel, I think I'm hoping that will be non-controversial because I think algorithmically that should roughly replace the current implementation with something that is much easier to understand. So like there shouldn't be a lot of discussion around perf, like we can do basic benchmarks, but it should be roughly the same. I think what Josh is talking about, because I, I think Josh, this is based on that PR that you did like a month or two ago where you did this adaptive thing that like occasionally makes a map or something like that, right? Is, is that? Yeah, but although there's a couple of other options, which I never, uh, I never prototyped, but I, I listed out. Yeah. Better. Yeah, but yeah. functionally, like the last time we we did audits, I was doing audits for like M squared header stuff, and there were a couple that were like, right. you know, we get these reviews where someone adds a new header lookup, and it's uh -huh. like finding yeah. this header is going to be, you know, yep. Yep. And tokenizing it and like adding those up, and it's like it'd be nicer to just not have to worry about it and say the status structures are efficient yeah. enough, we don't have to stress that and, we're going to get. And also, like one of the things that, that Josh is looking at, and well, hopefully, if we were discussing this the other day, was. Like, could we just rethink everything and start with a simple map and then go from there? And like, yeah, maybe that isn't performant enough, but like, let's actually do some simple benchmarking and actually, you know, start off because I like, mean, with simplicity here could allow us to remove a lot of the other things that have historically been complicating here. And, you know, I understand the original motivation here, but over time, you know, ch trade offs change, you know, performance of Absol flat hash map might be different than that of, you know, uh, STD, unordered map, all this kind of stuff. And we should just, just like, Get a, get, a, get a clear understanding of what bits of what, what complexity is buying us where we have it and what what is the essential complexity and what is actually optional I think that's all fine I, I mean and and that sounds like a great use of time to actually look at this from a holistic perspective it's something that I've wanted to do for a long time um, my, my my point more is that I think we can land a functionally equivalent code cleanup relatively quickly. And, and that will be probably non-controversial and make auditors like much happier. So yeah. I would suggest that we just do that because I don't think it's that hard. And then that will give us a little more breathing room to, to yeah, you know, hopefully think, look, look at this from a, you know, like a top-down perspective. But also Josh is cleaning up, I think links yeah. to like the four in-flight open issues we have regarding header cleanup. And, and yeah. it's, it's saying like, let's do all of it. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I think that's the most uncontroversial part. Although I think that if we make some data structure changes, I'm not sure if the other uh, data structure swaps will still make sense. But uh, no, they probably don't. Yeah. I, it's just I, I think it's just a matter of timing. Again, it's yeah, like yeah, because right? we really have weeks of analysis to do before the right the, the real one lands, and you could probably do the the actual okay, swap yeah. one in a day. Yeah, the okay. yeah. So and, and I mean, but on on that point, with all the fuzzing we have now and a bunch of other stuff, like does it really matter? Probably not. So I I'll I'll defer to all of you to decide what you know what we should do there. But yeah, it would be great. Like this is one of the areas where um, you know that code is really from three and a half or four years ago. And it hasn't really had any, I would say, rigorous performance analysis since then. I think that's it we had for the agenda. Does anyone have other things they want to talk about while we're here? <clears throat> yeah, this is uh, Gary. I just had a quick question about the uh, dynamic forward proxy. I saw that it was uh, checked in there, Matt, uh, back in the summertime. And according to the documentation, it's um, 
done as uh, uh, an alpha state. I haven't seen a document document update since then. I've been playing around a little bit with it. Uh, it seems to be stable, didn't have any uh, uh, issues with it. Um, do you have an update as far as, uh, um, is it expected to be stable or are there other things? <laughs> To be, to be perfectly honest, the way in the past that we have gone from alpha to stable is when I hear of enough people using it in production and no one is reporting issues. So, sorry, there was some, some bad echo there. Um, so I think it's probably stable and we can probably remove that tag. Um, yeah, like Again, we, we don't have any rigorous process right now from moving to alpha to stable. As robust, I think it's marked as robust to upstream and downstream, untrusted upstream and downstream. So it's sort of surprising that it's still in the alpha state if it's marked like that from the security perspective. I think there's, I, I think, again, this probably needs a little more rigor in terms of um, how we mark different things. Okay. I think the security perspective is obviously what the intention is, meaning we would fix any issues that come up there. I think the alpha status was more just typically when we put out a new filter that doesn't have a lot of production coverage, you know, I think we're just trying to say that it doesn't okay. have a lot of production coverage. Yeah. But I, I do know implicitly that there are people using it in prod. So I think it's probably okay to, to, to switch it now. Um, but again, that's yet another process thing that we probably need to look at. So I will, I will make a note there. Okay, yeah, that's great, thank you. Um, has anyone done any sort of uh, scalability testing in the sense that uh, uh, from the number of dynamic hosts that uh, are sort of it scales to? Um, um, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I think the code has all of the right circuit breakers in place to avoid un unlimited expansion and things like that. So I think that you could do your own measurements, you know, to, to, to see, we definitely wrote the code like with it in mind to, you know, use a limited amount of memory, but I, I think you'd have to do your own measurements. Okay, great. Thank you. And last question I had is, um, currently the HB Connect support uh, is uh, not present yet. Are you aware of anyone that's planning to work on that? There's, there's someone that said that they were going to do it, but I, I haven't seen any progress on that. Um, so I would assume that it's not being worked on right now. Um, it's something that I would love to see land. I, I think we have a pretty good idea of roughly what needs to be done. Um, it would just require a development resource. Okay, thank you so much. Anyone else? Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, thank, uh, I'm working on I'm company and uh, I'm now I'm working on the envoy and uh, I want to enable the uh, envoy uh, CI/CD on ARM64 platform. Uh, but uh, uh, I have a few questions about it. Uh, the first question is. Uh, 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 which cloud platform is chosen by the invoice CICD? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I mean, the invoice CICD platform support that the, the invoice CICD platform supporting the ARM64 platform does it support the ARM64. Right, right, right now we're doing our all of our builds through Google's RBE service. Um, and I, I don't know, but I doubt that there are ARM hosts available. So it seems like it, at least if we do it through that system, it would have to be cross compiled. I know there are, I know there are a couple people running ARM builds right now. Uh, there's an open issue for it somewhere, um, that has people linking to their builds. Um, but as far as I know, there's nothing official. Yeah. Okay, and uh, uh, is it on the Google Cloud? S 
Sorry, what? Uh, is it on runs uh, Google Cloud? Yeah, so right now the RBE system runs on Google Cloud instances. Um, my, my advice would be to follow up with Leeson, who's not on the call right now. He's our, he's our build guru. Um, I, I, I don't know that anyone on the call right now is gonna be able to, to give you like in-depth, low-level details on this. And, and as a heads up, uh, Leeson is out of country right now, so there, there's a bunch of time lag, so email may work better than, than Slack. Okay. Thanks. Or Slack understanding there's going to be an eight hour time lag is also fine. Hi, this is uh, Roloff. I have a question. So um, you're currently using the, the Google Kush for um, Quick. Would you be interested in another implementation using uh, ng TCP2? Um, probably not, uh, at least not without someone doing a ton of work on their own. It's just like getting it, getting it working at all is a absolutely Herculean effort. So, um, you know. Yeah, I would say from, from experience, I, I TL'd the quick launch over at Google. It took us like two and a half years of tuning to sort out all the weird corner cases in, you know, various pathological act patterns and stuff. Like I wouldn't want to go through that again, which is why we're doing the quiche integration for Envoy is that's what we wanted. We ha I don't think we have objections, but it's more like the, the open SSL versus boring SSL thing of like, Maintaining two is going to be uncomfortable, so if we have a good reason, like let's do it. But without it, it's easier to have one. Yeah, I mean, we we did build the quick listener thing as an extension, so it, it should be technically possible to plug in a different quick listener. Okay. Um, but you know, I think that's the kind of thing that you would probably be mostly on your own, and I, I'm I'm honestly not sure what technical reason what what technical problem you would be, you would be solving. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Call it. Sounds good. See you okay. in a few weeks. Bye. See you in a couple of weeks. Bye. Bye bye.